My dear Bunny, all I'm saying is how splendid of the club to give a dinner for him. Of course we must be there. To do honour to Mr. Rosenthal? Yes, exactly. Why? Well, haven't you read about him in the Hatley Evening newspapers? He's as rich as Croesus. Multi-millionaire. So we ought to do him honour. Ah, oh, the club has fallen on evil days. We might get some money out of it. We must support the club. I suppose it's a decent enough club in its way. I just think it's evidence of evil days if they're willing to kowtow to a blighter like that. Now, why do you call him a blighter? Because he's rich? Well, no. Do you despise him because he's a colonial, a South African? No, it's not that. Or because he left his native London and started as a labourer in the diamond mines of Kimberley? No, of course not. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Beckett. Afternoon. Or because he's a self-made man, a self-made millionaire. No, that's got nothing to do with it. And the rest of us are products of hereditary wealth, with a few exceptions. <laughs> if you refuse to understand what I'm saying... Understand what? If it's not a snobbish reason, what can it be? The fact that the man's a notorious ruffian, and a bully, and, and a bad character, and... How do you know? By reading about him. Ah. You believe what you read in the newspapers? I don't think they can be trusted to get anything right except perhaps the cricket scores. I think Rosenthal deserves to be given the benefit of the doubt. What doubt? I was on the committee that decided to invite him. I might say I persuaded the committee. What? So I find it a bit hard that my old school friend refuses to back me up. Oh, honestly, Raffles, I didn't realise. I wouldn't have dreamed if I'd known it was your idea. Well, you know now. Yes, I I'm sorry. So you'll come to the dinner? Well, I... For my sake. Well... Henry. <laughs> That's not as many as I could have wished, but it's not a bad turnout. I hope it's enough to impress him. Impress whom? Our colonial friend. <laughs> What's their objective? Us, I should say. Are we funny? No, <laughs> we look so respectable. Gentlemen, <laughs> will you be upstanding for the loyal toast? <laughs> Gentlemen, the Queen. The Queen. The Queen. God bless her. God bless her. Uh, gentlemen, <clears throat> you may smoke. Good. Oh. <laughs> Sullivan? Yeah, thanks. Now for the fun. Fun? Oh, the speeches. I fancy they'll be amusing. <laughs> Not Digby's, of course. He's an ass. Gentlemen and old bohemians, it is my proud privilege tonight to propose the toast of the guests of the club. Mr. Rosenthal and his friend, Mr. Purvis. <laughs> now, Mr. Purvis needs no introduction. He is well known to all lovers of the noble art of self-defense. And attack. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Rosenthal, perhaps, our principal guest of honor tonight, perhaps deserves some explanation as to why he should be our... our principal guest of honor tonight. Oh, come on, you Mr. Ass. Rosenthal is one of those men, one of the most prominent of those men, who have carved out a career for themselves in our far-flung colonies and have, through their own efforts, found fortune beyond the dreams of avarice. He is himself, may I say, <laughs> a rough diamond. <laughs> who has discovered a multitude of other rough diamonds to give to the world, or rather to sell to the world. A world that is hungry for diamonds, but none so magnificent as those which he wears himself, as a symbol of his un unrivaled position as the diamond king of South Africa. I give you the toast of Mr. Rubin Rosenthal and the guests of the Old Bohemian Club. Mr. Rosenthal, would you do us the honor of replying to the toast? Uh, give me some more brandy and I will. Waiter. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yes, That's more right. like it. Soda water, sir. When I want soda water, I'll call for it. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, now I call you gentlemen because that's what you call me. <laughs> and because gentlemen means you ain't poor. You ain't poor like I used to be. <laughs> but you ain't rich like I am now. <laughs> Nobody ain't rich like I am now. I could buy up the whole lot of you and never know the difference. And that is why I've been invited here tonight. This, uh, this dinner ain't in honour of me. No, no, no. It's in honour of my money, because you hope you'll get some of it. He's quite right, you know. <laughs> you invited my money here tonight in the hope that some of it will stay here, but I ain't such a mug as all that. No, 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 no. You want to rob me? You come and rob me fair and square. I'll give you my address if you like. 22 St. John's Wood Road. That's where my money is. And I'll tell you who you'll find there. Three cappers who worked down the mines with me when I started. My mate here, Billy Purvis. Right. And me. Now, Billy here, he knows how to handle his fists. And so do I. Right again. And we'll be pleased to take on any of you gentlemen, if you care to call. Happy to meet you. <laughs> yeah, wait us some more brandy. Oh, come on. Now then, to prove to you that I'm as good as any of you lot, and better. Which of you goes around with a diamond like this in his shirt front and a diamond like this on his finger, eh? I tell you I wouldn't take £50,000 for the two of them. Now then, you show me the man that goes around with £25,000 on his front and another 25000 on his finger. You can't. That isn't one. Except me. He doesn't exist, and if he did, he wouldn't have the pluck to wear them. But I have, and here is why. <laughs> Billy, stand over there. Let me shoot a sovereign out of your hand. Now, don't be a fool, Rube. I just want to show these gentlemen what's liable to happen to the first man who tries to rob me. Don't show off, Rube. I'll show off if I want to. You see that wall over there? I'm going to write my initials on it. R for Reuben and for Rosenthal. The same as I write my initials on anyone I catch trying to take from me what's mine. Mr. Rosenthal. There. Now, anyone here want to try and get the better of me? Hey. Raffles. <laughs> it was horridly obvious, I admit. But yes, I have set my heart on having those diamonds. I was only sorry I couldn't get up on my hind legs and say so. You very nearly did. Well, one couldn't hear so much of them without longing to have a try for them. But when it becomes a question of Rosenthal practically challenging the whole world, well, the thing becomes inevitable. Well, I'm your man, of course, but we've got enough to live on for months. I don't actually see the necessity. Necessity? My dear Bonnie, does the writer only write when the wolf is at the door? Does the painter paint for bread alone? Must you and I be driven to crime? Like Harry of Bethnal Green and Dick of Whitechapel? No, but did You that... pain me, my dear chap. You didn't laugh. Because you do. Art for art's sake is a vile catchword. But I confess, it appeals to me. And I am an artist. An artistic thief? In this case, my motives are absolutely pure. I thieve for the sake of thieving, but if I don't have a try for those diamonds, by heavens, Bunny, I shall never hold up my head again. We shall have our work cut out. A man's reach must exceed his grasp, dear boy. Or what the Dickens is a heaven for? I shall have to plan the operation. It will mean my watching the house for at least a week. Then maybe a dozen different ways in which the thing might be done, and I shall have to choose between them. Well, why shouldn't we both watch the house? Because two eyes are as good as four, and they take up less room. Never hunt in couples, unless you're obliged. But there'll be work enough for you to do when the time comes, that is, if you're really on. Oh, of course I am. You can't leave me out of it. You shall have your share of the fun, that I promise you. And a purple diamond. 
all to yourself, if we're lucky. Come back in a week. That's a good job. Sorry, sir, he went out first thing this morning, he hasn't come back since. I called yesterday and he was out. Yes, I know you did, sir. He's been out a lot this week. Uh, could I give him a message when he comes in, sir? No. I know where he is. I'll go and find him. Forgive my heat, Barney, but it was awfully foolish of you. Why? Why? Standing, staring at the house. You were going to walk right up to it and look at the windows. Oh, why not? There was no one in. You think so? They're as clever as monkeys, these chaps, Barney. They know every trick in the business. Here am I, trying all kinds of dodges, begging at the door, hiding in the shrubbery. It's a costume piece, Bunny, and in you rush in your ordinary clothes. I tell you, from the lookout for us night and day. Well, if you'd told me so, I shouldn't have come. It's only because you didn't tell me. Read your paper and look disgusted. You told me nothing, Raffles. Well, I've, I've been too close. It's second nature with me when I've got anything on. You said come in a week and I went to your rooms and you were out. I'm not going to the Aubrey now. I'm going to walk to the Finchley Road and take an omnibus. I want you to follow me. But for heaven's sake, keep your distance and don't speak to me again until I speak to you. Uh, it's all the same. I never give a damn. Like it, Bunny? Is it yours? Ah, it's a studio. And I'm its lawful tenant. 
The landlord only lets to artists, but, as you know, I am an artist, in my own way. And that is the canvas that I'm always going to make a start on, just as soon as I can find my ideal model. Alas, perhaps I'm over fussy, but I haven't found it yet. Could you use it as a dressing room? Yes. It's useful for that. And there's no saying how useful it might be for other things, too. But a pitch. You never told me about this place. Well, there was really no reason why I shouldn't have shown it to you before. But again, there was no real point in my doing so. Ah. As your friend? Well, uh, circumstances ow, are conceivable in which it would have suited us both for you to remain. Oh. Ah, in genuine ignorance of my whereabouts. What <clears throat> circumstances? My dear Bunny, we may not always have the luck on our side. The day may come when I shall have to run for my life to escape the long arm of the law. And one could boat farther and do a good deal worse than in this place. I suppose so. I need not tell you that I'm not known as Raffles here. And I'd like to have you with the, that splendidly honest bewilderment on your face, <sighs> swearing perfectly truthfully, uh, that you've no idea where I've got. Do you see? Yes, I see, but I'm not sure I like being valued for my honest bewilderment. And for many other things, too. Oh, well, thank you for that. Do you come here much? I have the stove lit on principle twice a week. I look in, leave a newspaper, and the smell of Sullivan's. Oh, and how good they are after that filthy shag. I pay my rent regularly. I'm a good ten... Thank you. A good tenant in every way. If I come in wearing a billycock and go out wearing a topper, or vice versa, no one pays the slightest attention. You never told me you went in for disguises. Disguises? I don't know, after battle in some cases. That cupboard's full of toggery. I tell the woman who cleans the room that it's former models, and I finally find them. <laughs> oh, by the way, I hope we've got something that'll fit you. Me? Why? Well, you want a rig for when we have a go at Rosenthal's place. Oh, when will that be? I don't know yet. I take it rather badly of you, Raffles, that you still won't trust me enough to tell me your plans. My dear Bunny, I apologise profusely. You're quite right. I've treated you very shabbily all round. Well, I do think you might show a little more confidence in me. Indeed I will, from now on. But I must explain. I had intended writing to you when it was the right moment to go for the diamonds. I was going to ask you to look me up at the Albany. And I was going to unfold my plan of campaign and take you into action then and there. There's nothing like putting the nervous players in straight away. It's the sitting with their pads on and waiting that upsets their apple cart. You think I'm a nervous player? You must try and forgive me. It's just that I think you'll play better if you don't have any time to weaken on it beforehand. Well, I suppose that's true. Believe me, you've got to be cool and smart in this job, as cool and smart as you ever were in your life. Even cooler and smarter. Yes, I believe you. Rosenthal and Purvis are a lot tougher opposition. Lord Loch Maven. I thought you'd find them so. Well, all the more credit to us for lifting the diamonds. And now, shall I tell you what is the first move in the game? What? Well, the first move is to have a jolly good dinner and a bottle of wine. While I tell you my adventures in St John's Wood. But I'm not dressed. Well, we can stop off at your place in Mount Street on our way to, uh... Where shall it be? The club? What better place to... Plot Rosenthal's downfall, hmm? Yes? What, on the Chambertin, I think, please, Philip? Chambertin, yes, sir. Napoleon's favourite tipple. And Mr. Rosenthal's, too, sir. Oh, really? He downed three bottles of the club Chambertin that night we had him as guests, not to speak of the brandy afterwards, but it was the Chambertin that started him off. He liked it, did he? Not half he didn't. We don't get stuff like this in South Africa. He kept saying, where do you get it from? Did you tell him? Well, I was going to, sir, but by then he'd started shooting. <laughs> yes. He certainly left his mark on it, now. Yes, sir. The Chambertin right away, Mr. Rappel. Yes, That's interesting, was it? Well, all information about Rosenthal is interesting and possibly useful. 
Plug the information I gained this past week on the hours he keeps. Oh? There never was such an irregular household. Do you know some nights they simply don't go to bed at all? It's devilish unfair on poor burglars trying to make an honest living when the master of the house sits up all night. He's in restraint of trade. I should say it is. I say, Raffles. Yes? Are you going on the MCC tour this winter? No, no, tell them I'm not available. I don't know if they'd have picked me. Of course they would. Well, I'm, I've got too much business on here, really. A pity. It ought to be exciting. Yeah, it ought to be fairly exciting here, too. I, I'm meant with the Australians. I'm more concerned with the South Africans. Oh. I'll tell you one piece of information I picked up, which might come in useful and make Rosenthal shoot crooked at the critical moment. So what? I spent the whole of Monday night in the shrubbery at the garden next door. Rosenthal and that brute Curtis were up and drinking from midnight when they came in till broad daylight when I cleared out. Even then they were still sober enough to slang each other. They brought their bottles out into the garden within a few yards from me. And they very nearly came to blows. Do you know what an IDB is? Illicit diamond buyer. Mm. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's a devil of a crime in South Africa. It's worse than murder, almost. Was Rosenthal one? It seems so. It seems he didn't make his fortune by prospecting. He made it by illegal trading. That makes me feel better about robbing him. Why, because he broke the law in the first place? Yes. <laughs> Bong. What a respectable little cuss you are. Well, I like something to make me feel justified. It's like you with your thing about being an artist. Oh. How, how do you know he was an IDB? He must have let it out to Purvis in his cups. And Purvis was taunting him with it. And threatening him with the breakwater at Cape Town in a gang of convicts. I thought they were friends. Well, they may be when they're sober, but a few bottles will turn them into friend and foe. And it's a good few bottles every night of the week in that house. So what do you mean to do? Get in when they've gone out, get out before they come back. I don't fancy having Rosenthal sign his name. But, but what? You want those diamonds? Yes, I have set my heart on them. But Rosendahl always wears them with his evening dress when he goes out in the evening. Then we must make sure this is one evening when he doesn't wear his evening dress. Bonnie? Yes? It's open. In here. Got it? Got what? Headed note paper from the wine merchant. Beautiful stuff. By appointment to His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. I didn't know he was as good as all that, did you? Rosenthal is bound to be impressed by that. Come to think of it, I'm quite impressed myself. How did you get it? I went there to discuss wines for the club, so it was a perfectly serious discussion, as you know. I'm on the wine committee. And when he left the room for a few moments, I simply helped myself to a couple of sheets of his notepaper from his desk. Simple. Now then. No. You read it. Aloud. Oh. Dear Mr. Rosenthal, we are gratified to hear that you expressed your appreciation of our Chambertin 1889 on the occasion of your visit to the Old Bohemian Club. May we have the pleasure of inviting you to a wine tasting at our cellars at which the Chambertin and a number of other particularly fine wines will be served, together with a cold collation. The repast will be rounded off by our VSOP brandy. That'll get him. Please bring Mr. Purvis, if you wish to do so, and any ladies of your choice. Ladies? Lydies, with an eye, and a head of hair like a bath sponge. There's two or three of them in more or less permanent residence. Now, for the important point, which we must throw away in a postscript. We must also give him alternative dates in case he is otherwise engaged. Um, for wine tastings at our cellars, dress is... Informal. There. That should do the trick. How will you know which date he's going to come? By reading his answer, of course. Oh. 
Oh. Lucky for you, I ain't gone. Thank you, bud. Friday. He will be delighted to come to our cellars. Friday. We should be delighted to go to his house. Splendid. Or travesty. What? My dear Bunny, if we are to act the part of burglars, we must dress the part. Bless Rosenthal for his rowdy behaviour. The people next door have shut up the house and gone abroad for the winter rather than suffer him any longer. Come on, Dolly, Maisie, come on, Billy, what are you doing? Walk me out here, then. We've got plenty of time. I don't want to be late for the tasting. They don't wait for us. Look at all those plucky women. Where, where, where have they got to? Tittivating themselves, I suppose. Oh, we could have had another drink. Hey, yellow, you black hog. Yeah, boss. Bring me another big brandy. And one for me. And one for Mr. Purvis. Yeah, boss. And tell those two women we ain't going to wait no longer. Want us to look nice? And we didn't keep you waiting no more than a moment. We're as quick as we could. Oh, and what was you doing of, eh? Right, oh, right. what about us then? Don't we get none? Oh, go on. Bring us the same as what well, Sarah. I think so, you drunken beast. Yeah. All on. right, only one of them we're going, right? All right. How long does it take to get there, driver? A good half an hour, sir, this time of night. Half an hour? We're going to be late. Come on, get in the carriage. Come on, you can bring it on the way. Come on, come on. Come on, come no, on, come on. It's coming now, it's coming. Come I on. want to see it in my hand first. Oh, come That's here, it is. more come like on. it. Right. Now I'm willing. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, darling. Come on, mate. Come on, sit in. 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 Come on, London Bridge. London Bridge. Right, sir. decide to come back for it. They're not coming back. Wait, wait. How long will they be gone? At least an hour. It should give us all the time in the world to ransack the house for those diamonds. What about the gathers? Put your mask on. lay long odds, the sight of you will scare any Kaffir ever born. Really? Of course, you might have to tickle them up a bit with your shooter, too. You don't mean kill them? Good Lord, no. I mean threaten them to frighten them. Killing's not in our game. Oh, all right. I think it's the psychological moment. <gasps> you ready? Ready. Right. Probably in the kitchen cooking a supper of mealies. They won't 
dare go into the main rooms when Rosenthal's not there. He's got them dead scared of disobeying him, so there shouldn't be any trouble to us. Good. So all we have to do is A, get into the house, and B, find out where Rosenthal keeps his diamonds. And C, get out again. Oh, that should be no trouble. to meet you at last. Shift foot or finger though and you are dead men. You, you greaser, I know you. I've been watching you all week. I've been, I've been waiting for you to call. Plucky smart you thought. He's up, didn't you, with your clever disguises, eh? But you weren't as clever as all that. You weren't clever about your feet. Left the same tracks every day, you buggins. And the same tracks every night all around the blessed premises. Oh, don't excite, Governor. It's a fair cop. By God, it is, yes. We don't half sweat to know how you brung it off, though. You want to know too much, you do. You've heard of an invention called the telephone. Well, then why merchants have got one and they, they didn't send me no invitations. Oh, you're a clever one, you are. And you are a knowing one, but you have struck a knowing act. Don't shoot, Governor! We ain't half so I'll be good! For good mind to plug you with a couple of stinking thieves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we know all about that. What do you mean? Set a thief to catch a thief. I should think so, too. What do you mean? Now, spit it out or bite Christmas, I'll drill you. Well, price that breakwater in Cape Town, then. Eh? Hey? That breakwater in Cape Town, you old RDB. <laughs> where in hell did you get hold of that? Yeah, yeah you may well ask. Where? It's all over the place where I come from. All over the place, is it? It's common knowledge. And who started it going all over the place? Well, I don't know. You better all see other geezer. Who? Him! Really? Did you? Well, if it wasn't him, I don't know who he was. Why, you? Let's get out of his way. I've got to get a shot. Get out of his way. Right. Now put those clubs down and put your hands up, or I'll fill you full of holes. I will? Yeah, yeah. Right. Now get over there by that wall. No, 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 no fire. No, 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 no fire. Over there. Right. No, no fire. Now you stay there until I've gone. Right? <laughs> Some shooting, eh? I'm good at it. I used to be Buffalo Bill in a travelling circus before I, before I made me pile. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> black dogs. Pick up your knob, Kenneth, and get out of here. Yeah, boss. He ain't gonna hurt you, but you're gonna get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. you, boss. Who thought you were gonna get away, eh? <laughs> Not bloody likely. Let's have a look at you, shall we? Oh, well, well. 
<laughs> You're a baby face, ain't you, to come out on a job like this? Where's your big brother then? Run off and left you, has he? We well, ain't armed governor, so help me God. Bit of a fibber, wasn't he, eh? <laughs> Here, what else you got in your pockets? You, uh, you got my diamonds by any chance? What's all this shooting about? You up to your games again? Don't you worry about what I'm doing. Well, are you going to come and have supper, or ain't you? Billy, turn out his pockets. <laughs> oh, well, well, well. Tried to take my diamonds, did you? I said, did you? <laughs> answer me, blast you, when I speak to you. <laughs> no. You don't want to answer me, eh? Why? Because you're afraid your voice might give you away? Is that it, eh? Are you a gentleman in disguise? Is that what it is? No. You are to him. <laughs> no. You know, how did you come to get mixed up with that fella of yours? He's a proper cockney and no mistake. Where'd he go to? Where's he hiding? I'd like to find him, I would. Me too. I'd like to find out who told him that tale about me being an IDB. Yes, that's right. Because the man who told him that tale is going to suffer for it like he's never done before in the whole of his life. Quite right, too. He deserves it. Because whoever it was, it wasn't me. I wouldn't do a thing like that. All right, now. Where's he gone to? Go and tell yeah. us. Tell us and we'll let you go free. No. Are you going to tell us? You can go to hell. <laughs> Will you ever let him talk to you like that? I wouldn't if I was you. Pull your diamonds back, Rube. Put them on the table over there. If you're safe there. I'll be safe there as long as I've got my gun in my hand. Are you going to sit there with that gun in your hand all night? No, of course not. Well, I'm hungry even if you ain't and thirsty too. Yeah. That was Maisie, especially Thursday. Oh, hold on, hold on just a minute. I want to try something. What? Billy, go and get a length of that cord from the storeroom, will you? What are you going to do? Just do as I say. Now, you, you come for them diamonds, didn't you? And you want them, don't you? Look, they're only an arm's length away from you. Why not take them? Go and reach out your hand and try and take them. You can do it easy. <laughs> go and try and take them and, and see what happens. No, thank you. Oh, are you afraid of this gun? There's nothing to be afraid of. I'll only shoot your fingers off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a brave man, so long as you've got that gun in your hand. You are right. You are quite right. <laughs> Billy, this young gentleman has got absolutely the right view of the situation. <laughs> the difference between me and him is that I've got a gun and he has not. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Which is why you're going to use that cord to tie him up. Starting with a even hand, so he can't try to take another man's property. <laughs> now he's ankle, so he can't try to run away. <laughs> Silly, now tie the other end of that rope to that post on the fireplace, just for fun. <laughs> now then, how are you feeling? All right now, are you? Uh, will you forgive us for a few moments, only the... The ladies insist. Ah! <laughs> and we'll be back as soon as we can after we've had our supper. <laughs> Bye then. <laughs> Bye -bye then. See you soon. before somewhere at that club no are you an old bohemian no now, anyway listen you're gonna tell me who told you that story about me in in, in south africa what story that damn lying story about me being an idb i'm not going to tell you anything not to oblige no right 
stay right where you are. Don't you move. Now then, you still sure you're not going to tell me? Come on out, out with it! I'm not going to tell you anything. Hey, perhaps you... Perhaps you don't know. Perhaps only that cockney pal of yours knows. Where do I find him? Where is he, eh? You'll never find him. You tell me, or I'll blow you into the middle of next week. Steady on, Rube, it'll be murder. I only want to get him to talk. I know, but if you hit him, you're for it. It's murder. But he's a burglar, isn't he? Yes, but that don't make it right. Well, what does then? He's unarmed and he's still tied up. It's plain murder, whatever you do. Untie him, then. What for? Give him a chance. I'll shoot him while attempting to escape. You're drunk. You're <laughs> drunk as a fool. Pull yourself together. You ain't gonna do what you'll be sorry for. Untie him, I said. All right, but mind. I'm not going to shoot at him. I'm going to shoot round and round. No, you, 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 you're quite right. I wouldn't harm him. I'll just, I'll just shoot round and round. I'll behave like a sensible man. Not like a maniac. Not, 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 not like a maniac. A sensible man. I only want to ask him now then. Do you know who told that lying, wicked story about me? Yes. Who? He did. I never! Rube! What did you do? You told him! I never Rube on a bride. Who did then? I don't know. Someone else, but it wasn't me! Is that the truth? Now this is your last chance. Your last chance to tell me the truth or I shoot you. Now then! What's going on in here? N nothing, officer. Nothing at all. I heard shots from outside, so I come in to investigate. What were the shots? Shots? Definitely shots. Oh, they, they were just my friend, Mr. Rosenthal. Yeah, well, we called a burglar trying to rob us. Burglar, eh? Uh, yes. A burglar. And he was armed, was he? Yes, he was. So I see. Would you mind picking that up for me, please, sir? Uh, uh, pick it up yourself, can't you? Yes, I can, sir. If you're not willing to help. Help? A lot of help we get from you. A lot of use you are coming in when it's all over. We, we might all have been burgled and murdered in our beds for all the good you did. This hasn't been fired. So I take it the shots I have were fired by you, sir? Yes, they were. To, to protect my household. Now, I'm entitled to do that, ain't I? I don't know your name, sir. Rosenthal. Reuben Rosenthal, the Diamond King of South Africa. I expect you've, uh, you've heard of me. You the owner of this house, sir? No, I'm, I'm the, the tenant. Mr. Rosenthal, South Africa. That's me, yes, that's me. Time. Diamonds? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, we know all about you, sir. What do you mean? I just mean they'll be very interested down at headquarters to hear what's happened at your place, sir. Watch, watch, they'd be interested. Now, can you show me exactly, sir, where these shots of yours went? Well, well what does it matter where they went? They, they didn't kill anybody, did they? It's to be hoped not, sir. No. They didn't do no damage to nobody. Well, no, that's lucky for you, they didn't. What's happening here, then? Shh, it's a cop, Pat. Can't you see? Oh, good evening, officer. Good evening. Evening, ladies. Were these ladies witnesses to the burglary? No, 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 they weren't. Just, just, just him and me. You two actually saw him burgle something, didn't you? Yes, we did, yes. And what did you see him burgle? Well, he, 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 he tried to pinch those two diamonds over there. Oh, yeah? Yes. Very nice. Hmm. Total value, what? 50 quid? <laughs> More like 50,000. <laughs> and where did you get them from, sir? Well, from South Africa. Oh, yeah. Hold yeah. yeah. well, then. It looks like I shall have to take you in. Now then, you're going to come quietly? Yes, yes, I'll come quietly. Good, you better. 
Good night, then, sir. We'll be seeing you at Maribyrn Station. Well, wait, uh, do, do I have to go there? We'd like to see you there, sir. I'll tell you when it's to be. All right. Oh, I'd better take these. Hey, well, what are you taking those for? Material evidence, sir. Huh? Have to be produced in court. Well, is, 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 is that the law? It's the law, yeah. I don't know what it is in South Africa. I can write you a receipt if you like. No, 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 no. It'll be perfectly safe with me. Just remember me number. PC 43. Maribyrn Station. Oh, so I remember. You can have them back as soon as they've been produced in court. Huh? Providing you can produce evidence of ownership. What do you mean? I mean, where you got them, things like that, where they come from. Ah, just you listen, you blasted... Now, Come you on, keep a civil it. tongue in your head, yeah. or I'll take you in two. You better look after that pal of yours. He ain't feeling too good. Right then, Mr. Burglar, off to the station with you. Good night, sir. Good night to you, ladies. No, don't start telling me all about it. You can save it for the inspector. Good night again, sir. We'll be seeing you at Maribyrn Station. I've no doubt. Come on, then. Oh, move yourself. Come on. You got off light, Rube. Did I? I didn't know you at first. Oh, I should have not. Do I rather fancy myself in this helmet? It's one of a collection I made up at Cambridge. It was all the rage then, pinching policemen's helmets, strung young bloods, you know. I didn't go to Cambridge. How did you manage to be so quick? Came back in a cab. The only difficulty was to get rid of it. He wanted to wait for me. Well? Sent him off to Scotland Yard with a ten-bob tip and a special message. <laughs> what? I should think the whole of the detective department will be at Rosenthal's place in about half an hour. And I like to think they will ask him some very embarrassing questions. I hope they give him as bad a time as he gave me. I hope they give him a worse one. Still, this should help make up uh, the about time. As promised, one purple diamond. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> and one for me. To keep us in Scotch whiskey and silence. And just think, next year, I shall play cricket as an amateur. Let's have some fun with Beckett. Now oh, then, come on, young follow me, lad. I say, Raffles, that really is a marvellous disguise. Good evening, Mr. Raffles, sir. <clears throat> Good evening, Beckett. Been to another of them fancy dress balls, have you, sir? Yes. A costume piece. Mm. Ha, 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 ha. 